The Origins of the War The first war between Rome and Carthage arose out of the political situation in the island of Sicily. The, the town of Messana was occupied by the Mamertini, a band of Campanian mercenaries who had been in the service of Syracuse but who had deserted and seized this town about 284 BC. Because of their perpetual acts of brigandage, they were a menace to their neighbors, the Syracusans. The latter, now under an energetic ruler, Hiero, who had assumed the title of king, in 265 succeeded in blockading Messana and its ultimate capture seemed certain. In despair, the Mamertini sought help from the Carthaginians who sent a garrison to Messana, for they looked with jealousy upon any extension of Syracusan territory. However, the majority of the Mamertini sought to be taken under the protection of Rome and appealed to the Roman Senate for aid. The senators on the one hand saw that to espouse the cause of the Mamertini would be to provoke a war with Carthage, an eventuality before which they shrank. But on the other hand, they recognized that the Carthaginian occupation of Messana would give them the control of the Straits of Messana and constitute a perpetual threat against southern Italy. The strength of these conflicting considerations made them unwilling to assume responsibility for a decision and they referred the matter to the assembly of the centuries. Here the people, elated, apparently, by their recent victorious wars in Italy, and led on by hopes of pecuniary advantage to be derived from the war, decided to admit the Mamertini to the Roman alliance. One consul, Appius Claudius, was sent with a small force to relieve the town, 264. The Mamertini induced the Carthaginian garrison to withdraw, and then admitted the Roman force which crossed the straits with the aid of vessels furnished by their Greek allies in Italy. Thereupon the Carthaginians made an alliance with the Syracusans, but the Romans defeated each of them. In the next year, the Romans sent a larger army into Sicily to attack Syracuse and met with such success that Hiero became alarmed, and, making peace upon easy terms, concluded an alliance with them for fifteen years. Aided by Hiero, the Romans now began an attack upon Agrigentum, the Carthaginian stronghold which threatened Syracuse. When this was taken in 262, they determined to drive the Carthaginians from the whole island. However, Roman operations in Sicily could only be conducted at considerable risk and the coasts of Italy remained exposed to continued raids as long as Carthage had undisputed control of the sea. Consequently, the Romans decided to build a fleet that would put an end to the Carthaginian naval supremacy. They constructed 120 vessels, of which 100 were of the type called quinquiremes, the regular first-class battleships of the day. The complement of each was 300 rowers and 120 fighting men. With this armament, and some vessels from the Roman allies, the consul, Gaius Duilius, put to sea in 260 BC, and won a decisive battle off Miley on the north coast of Sicily. As a result of this battle in the next year, the Romans were able to occupy Corsica and attack Sardinia, and finding it impossible to force a decision in Sicily, they were in a position to attack Carthage in Africa itself. Another naval victory, off Egnemus, on the south coast of Sicily, cleared the way for the successful landing of an army under the consul Marcus Atilius Regulus. He defeated the Carthaginians in battle and reduced them to such extremities that they sought to make peace. But the terms which Attilius proposed were so harsh that in desperation they resumed hostilities. At this juncture they arrived at Carthage, with other mercenaries, a Spartan soldier of fortune, Xantippus, who reorganized the Carthaginian army. By the skillful use of cavalry and war elephants he inflicted a crushing defeat upon the Romans and took Attilius prisoner. A Roman fleet rescued the remnants of the expedition, but was almost totally lost in a storm off the southern Sicilian coast, 255. The Romans again concentrated their efforts against the Carthaginian strongholds in Sicily, which they attacked from land and sea. 
In 254 they took the important city of Panormus, and the Carthaginians were soon confined to the western extremity of the island. There, however, they successfully maintained themselves in Drapana and Lilibium. Meantime the Romans encountered a series of disasters on the sea. In 253 they lost a number of ships on the voyage from Lilibium to Rome. In 250 the consul Publius Clodius suffered a severe defeat in a naval battle at Drapana. And in the next year, a third fleet was destroyed by a storm off Fentius in Sicily. In 247, a new Carthaginian general, Hamilcar Barca, took command in Sicily and infused new life into the Carthaginian forces. From the citadel of Herct first, and later from Eryx, he continually harassed the Romans not only in Sicily, but even on the coast of Italy. Finally, in 242 BC, when their public treasury was too exhausted to build another fleet, the Romans by private subscription equipped 200 vessels, which undertook the blockade of Lilibium and Drapana. A Carthaginian relief expedition was destroyed off the Aegates Islands, and it was impossible for their forces, now completely cut off in Sicily, to prolong the struggle. Carthage was compelled to conclude peace in 241 BC. Carthage surrendered to Rome her remaining possessions in Sicily, with the islands between Sicily and Italy, besides agreeing to pay an indemnity of 3,200 talents in 20 years. For the Romans, the long struggle had been very costly. At sea alone, they had lost in the neighborhood of 500 ships and 200,000 men. But again, the Roman military system had proven its worth against a mercenary army, and the excellence of the Roman soldiery had more than compensated for the weakness in the custom of annually changing commanders. Moreover, the military federation which Rome had created in Italy had stood the test of a long and weary war, without any disloyalty being manifest among her allies. On the other hand, the losses of Carthage had been even more heavy, and, most serious of all, her sea power was broken, and Rome controlled the western Mediterranean. Weakened as she was after the contest with Rome, Carthage became immediately thereafter involved in a life and death struggle with her mercenary troops. These, upon their return from Sicily, made demands upon the state which the latter found hard to meet and consequently refused. Thereupon the mercenaries mutinied and, joining with the native Libyans and the inhabitants of the subject Phoenician cities, Liby Phoenicians, entered upon a war for the destruction of Carthage. After a struggle of more than three years, in which the most shocking barbarities were practiced on either side and in which they were brought face to face with utter ruin, the Carthaginians under the leadership of Hamilcar Barca stamped out the revolt, 238 BC. Up to this point Rome had looked on without interference, but now, when Carthage sought to recover Sardinia from the mutinous garrison there, she declared war. Carthage could not think of accepting the challenge and bought peace at the price of Sardinia and Corsica and 1,200 talents. This unjustifiable act of the Romans rankled sore in the memories of the Carthaginians.